In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me begin by linking Palm Sunday and Good Friday, and then beginning to attempt to speak about Easter. So on Palm Sunday, I spoke about the two processions that took place on that first Palm Sunday, and the need to ensure that the two processions in our lives are identified and a choice needs to be made. To choose a procession that places the needs above others or the procession that is self-centered and focused on self-survival. Both, I said, are well represented in the processions of Jesus and Pilate on that first Palm Sunday. Now, I'm not going to re-preach that Palm Sunday service. That's just to give you a little bit of a feel of where this Easter message is coming from. And so if you haven't already heard that Palm Sunday service, you can click on the links below in the descriptions and it'll take you there. And so on Good Friday, we had Reverend Canon Janet Trisk also speak about two contrasting happenings in her Good Friday message. She spoke about being physically present with each other and yet being so distant from each other. Two human beings being together and yet in no way reaching each other. She went on to say that it was the loneliest point of her entire week thus far, even though she had spent six days alone in lockdown. She spoke of the conversation between Jesus and Pilate, offering two examples of this communication gap. Two human beings being together, but not reaching each other. She spoke about the two different understandings of kingship. Jesus is being not of this world and Pilate being of it. So again, I'm not going to go into that Good Friday service. You will find the link for that Good Friday service in the descriptions below. So well then, what's the point of introducing these two sermons that you may have already heard? I think it is important to do so in order that you may have a context to locate today's message into. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Now these are beautiful, beautiful words. Wonderful words. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Lovely words. But words that may have become stale, overused and watered down. Watered down to such an extent that we've forgotten what the meaning of Easter is. So here is my attempt at revisiting that first Easter and doing so while looking at the contrast or dangers of using certain words. Jesus is Lord. This was Peter's central claim and maybe even the claim of the entire Christian community in those early days. A claim of faith. Jesus is Lord. Now this might seem common and shallow for us today, but I tell you what, if you spoke those words in the time that Peter and the other disciples spoke it, you were more than likely going to be put to death. Jesus is Lord is way different and in stark contrast to Caesar is Lord. And so anyone who claimed to say that Jesus is Lord at that time would have been charged with treason and put to death refusing to submit to Caesar as Lord and claiming a new king or a new kingdom, Jesus and his followers would have been committing treason. Canon Trist on Good Friday compared Caesar's kingdom with Jesus' kingdom. She goes on to say that Pilate builds his kingdom on power, fighting and holding on to status and power which, is uses, which uses force to coerce and to promote tranquility. Jesus' kingdom, on the other hand, is built not on power, not on politics, and not on armed forces. His is not of status or power. He's not a contender, contender for Pilate's position. Jesus' kingdom values love, sacrifice, and community. Now, the Romans put Peter to death Peter's central claim, as I said, was Jesus is Lord. Considered an act of treason, Peter was crucified in Rome some years later. Peter didn't die for defending a faith of spirituality or spiritual preferences 
or for using abstract claims that tried to make Christianity irrelevant in his day. Peter was put to death for claiming that Jesus is Lord. A claim that was contrary to the claim of the day that said Caesar was Lord. Now the radical message of Easter is not simply that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. I think it's far from that. It is what Jesus' resurrection meant to Caesar's rule and to every other rule, including ours today. Let me say it again. The radical message of Easter is not simply that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. It is what Jesus' resurrection meant to Caesar's rule and to every other rule, including ours today. Their power-hungry kingdoms are meant to be replaced by the kingdom of Jesus, where there is a preference for the poor. I reflect this week on every Easter service that I can remember with my family growing up. It was always a special occasion, huge family gatherings. We dressed up in fancy clothes, went to church, got back from church, had beautiful lunches together, remembering that the churches were so well decorated on Easter Sundays. We all celebrated and proclaiming that death has been defeated. Jesus is risen and then it was all over. Jesus is Lord. He is risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia. It's not just empty slogans to be shouted out at 5 a.m. on Easter morning and to be forgotten all about at 8 a.m. He's a claim to a new order, a new kingship, a new ruler. This is what Easter was all about for Peter and the rest of the disciples, that Jesus was raised from the dead to take his rightful place as Lord. This is a stark contrast to what we have made Easter out to be, at least for many of us. Today won't be, or today won't have decorated churches, huge family gatherings, maybe no elaborate meals for fear of the extended lockdown, that you may not have been planning for. Maybe we still in our night clothes as we journey together on this online Easter service. And maybe, just maybe, cutting these fancy frills will enable us to search deeply for a true and authentic Easter this year. Now on Palm Sunday, I spoke about the mission of the church and some saying it is about spirituality while others say it is about service to others. I said, that it must and always should be about both. We live in a world where economic, social, educational and political differences are the status quo. On this Easter Sunday, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. And the schemers, well, you know they're scheming even more. For many during this lockdown in our country, salaries are a great concern. Jobs are uncertain and a majority will fall into deeper poverty if there is such a thing as deeper poverty. So a few important questions for us as the church should be. Does it matter to our world? Does it matter to you that Christ is risen this Easter morning? Does Christ's resurrection have anything to do with our economic and social inequalities? Does resurrection change the choices I make and the life that I choose to live and how I choose to live it? Will we leave our homes only to return to business as usual after this lockdown? What did Jesus' Lordship and Kingship do for the, for the first Easter celebrators? It brought about a new kingdom for sure. Not a heavenly one, but an earthly one. One that we find in the book of Acts. One that followed immediately after the Great Commission. A new kingdom that challenged the status quo of the day. Where wealth and status was not important. Where feeling the hungry and looking after widows and children and setting the oppressed free was the order of the new kingdom and the new king. That is the Easter joy. The joy of Easter was that it began a new community. A resurrection community that looks very different to the community that we call Christian today. It is very different to the Christian communities that many of us subscribe to. It was no longer business as usual for the first Easter celebrations. 
they finally understood the message of Jesus. The message of the resurrection is about bringing others who are dead to life. Death in their marriages. Dead in their finances. Dead in their relationships. Dead in their tummies. Their homes. Resurrection began with Jesus in order for it to continue in each one of us. Easter is about a call to rise up and proclaim a community that will outlive all communities and all kingdoms. A community where the poor are blessed, enemies are loved, strangers are welcomed, where prisoners are set free and the dead are no more. Now I can't wait for this lockdown to be over for so many different reasons and on so many different levels. But one of the most important reasons is that I can't wait to see what the response of the church would be. Will we, because I am church also, become true Easter people? Or will it be back to business as usual? Jesus is Lord. He has risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.